Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, everyone here. Today we are in what I consider to be one of the most underrated battleships currently at tier seven. The HMS Lion uh, was a super prize for the winter coins a few Christmases ago, and it can only currently be found in crates. Uh, so kind of a rare ship to, to be out there. I think I got this from Wargaming a while back. I'm not sure. I might have even got it with the winter coins. Uh, I was a whale once in my day. Um, but the reason I consider the line to be severely underrated is with the recent um, just flooding of the matchmaking with carriers uh, and, and just kind of the a little bit change in the meta, you know, a little bit more HE, et cetera. Um, this ship has good survivability. It has 406 millimeter guns. This is uh, what the British designed to be an upgraded King George class with 16 inch guns. Um, and British, you know, AP and HE that, that do the trick. Also, a 25 second reload. We, we go over our build at the, at the end there, 26 second reload. So uh, when the lion gets accuracy like that, now the Kutasov did turn out, which obviously caused our shot to miss. Um, this ship probably is one of the best battleships at tier seven. But when you get that classic British accuracy, which is the reason I partly hate the Vanguard, uh, it, it can be a rough ship. Um, so, you know, RNG aside, though, it's still a very good ship, and, and this game kind of shows all of those traits. Now, you do have some fairly rough kiting angles, which is obviously one of the weaknesses of this ship. Uh, you combine that with kind of a squishy superstructure, uh, maybe not the best armor in a low health pool, and, and you know, those are the balancing factors, uh, which can make sometimes playing battleships a little bit rough. You, you, the, you know, the French are very good at tanking, which is why I think I love the Burgone so much, is you can open up those angles a little bit more. Uh, and you won't pay for it as much. Now, I will say that we are in a division with two excellent players, and the enemy team, uh, you know, we probably should have been on the other team. That's that's kind of how they play. But we take this central position here on Riposte, or Riposte, whatever this map is called, and we develop a crossfire. Those ships at sea are honestly a little oblivious uh, to, to us coming over to this side. And you can kind of see those angles starting to show up here. Uh, we're only able to get two guns on target with kind of, you know, we're, we're giving up a good chunk of broadside, but we don't want to give up any more as the ships on the far side of B there are able to lob us as that is the case right there. But by playing with her throttle and, and you know, knowing when you're putting yourself in a crossfire, you can, you can you know, prevent a lot of that. Uh, but also utilizing Allen cover as we talked about in our Wooster video. Another reason that the Lion is pretty underrated and pretty great, honestly, is it's AA. It's one of the best at the tier, or it's up there for sure, uh, and you have access to that defensive AA consumable. Um, something else that people don't think about is British Battleship's ability to shoot HE. Um, now, a lot of people think about that, and they're like, oh, yeah, fires. But something else you're doing with HE is destroying modules. Secondaries and AA modules can be very easily destroyed uh, by Battleship HE, so British battleships, considering they already have strong HE and good fire chance, you combine that with a carrier in your division and you can be destroying those AA and, you know, carriers can be getting their planes, you know, either strikes for free or less damaged, uh, you know, when those modules are destroyed. Uh, but here we have two players who are caught in a crossfire, not sure why they pushed ahead, but a shout out to our team at sea. Um, and because these guys aren't really paying attention to me, we have access to their broadsides for free. Uh, but here in a moment, you will notice that lacking, these lacking kiting angles. Um, this is a good defensive position you want to be in. Yes, I could be facing forward, but if those ships are to turn and start shooting at me, uh, we're a little bit broadside and we want to get out of there. That is why this, def you know, this position, the defensive kite, uh, stern tanking is a lot more effective uh, than, than bow tanking or front tanking. Uh, we're able to get all guns on target. Our armor is slightly angled uh, and we can, you know, if we go forward, we can escape a lot quicker going forward than we can in reverse. Uh, being caught in a battleship is probably a lot of battleship mains' biggest mistakes. They just bow tank in, uh, or like yesterday, they bow tank, you know, they reverse to the back of the map. Um, you know, gaining position now without giving up too much broadside is, is going to be your, your best friend in the battleship. But here, this Iowa, I honestly think he quit. Uh, these three battleships, like we said, are just caught bow tanking, which is why you should, you know, use these defensive positions. But I think this guy quit, whatever, and we, you know, free access to his broadside. So we see the torpedoes coming in there, and we decide to switch targets because he dies. Uh, you know, target selection is, is going to net you better results. Uh, now, you do want to finish, uh, you know, get guns off the board. If nobody's shooting at a target, anytime you can get those guns off the board, it's going to benefit you. But in that situation, we had two ships there shooting at him. We saw torpedoes, I think, from the carrier or a destroyer on the way. So what would be the point of shooting at that Iowa? Uh, yes, we did not get the kill, but honestly, that's why I'm not a huge fan of like 
overly, you know, sensationalizing Krakens and all that stuff because they're not as important as people think. It's it's sometimes, you know, you, you have that impressive game, you get the kills, it's nice. Um, but but damaging and, and prioritizing targets are a lot more effective. We got another free salvo on that Bismarck instead of wasting a full salvo uh, on that Iowa, and we weren't even assured the kill. So a lot of people, you know, kills are important, don't get me wrong, but a lot of people think kills and damage over position, target selection, uh, and utilizing the, the resources that your ship has. Now, if you're anything like me, you can see that this game is pretty much over. We have cap control, we have map, map control, as we got a beautiful salvo on that Bismarck. Utilizing auto-aim, while I think is... I don't really like auto-aim because it can kind of lead to some bad habits. You can see that we can actually lob this here, so um, that is one, you know, I guess, benefit of console over PC. Now, PC, you are able to drag that cursor, and when you don't have auto-aim, you can't shoot over islands, but because we have the auto-aim here we can smack that Bismarck and get the kill secure on him. Not really a secure. We took a good chunk of his health. We're already up to 100,000 damage, though. One kill, a nice little Citadel. And we actually haven't shot HE that much. Uh, now, again, the situation called for AP. We had access to those broadsides, so it's a lot easier to do so in this situation. But you can see here that mob roll is kind of kiting away. He's playing it a little defensive, or he's actually bow tanked in. But because of his angle, we went ahead and switched to the HE here. There's also two destroyers, one of which is obviously an A as uh, that cap is ticking. But we don't know where the other one is. We are detected here. Now, it could be the Kansas. It could be that battleship, which was last spotted on the north side of A. Uh, but because of that, we went ahead and switched to the HE. I will say our carrier on this on this team did a decent job of trying to get spots, but... If if it were me, I would try to I would be going after the destroyers first. It is always your job in a carrier to get destroyers. I don't care what your excuse is. Now, a Friesland or something like that, maybe spot him once, go after him once, and then it will be the team's responsibility. Usually, uh, heavy AA destroyers are not the best in terms of you know torpedoes and different things like that. Maybe the Ostergotland, but uh, it, there's a good trade-off there of heavy AA destroyers. So. Uh, but here we go ahead and switch up our angle. We mentioned uh, that destroyer. So you never want to sail in a straight line, uh, as I learned the other night while trying to set up my audio on this same map. So never sail in a straight line in a battleship. We actually decided to turn in here. We did want to support our weak side. The team at A did fall, uh, but because we smacked C pretty good, we were able to get into B here. And I decided to go on the inside of B. Now, this could have been a risky position with that destroyer and the carrier, but we, we, you know, we've already said we have great AA. Uh, and even with that Kansas out there, this is a good, this is a much better position. Uh, Jigsaw was communicating in German that he was getting focused. He already had a clear sky. So shout out to this carrier for, for donating uh, a lot of his planes to, to heavy AA battleships. Uh, again, it's just, it's things you see in the game, and I know everybody's not going to fully understand the game, but carriers not going after destroyers, destroyers not getting caps, battleships not shooting radar cruisers. If you guys want to have a better experience in Legends, try to learn the mechanics and the, you know, the ins and outs of the game, like getting caps, trying to secure wins. And when you do these things, you force the enemy to, to make plays. And when you force the enemy to make plays, more often than not, they make mistakes. Uh, now, sailing through this channel here is honestly probably a little bit of a mistake, but uh, because we are up now 400 points, I got greedy. Uh, so, <laughs> again, this is, you know, if we're, we're teaching strategy here, this is a little bit of a mistake. Channels like this are very destroyer-friendly, meaning destroyers throw torpedoes through that channel, uh, and, and they can kind of see where you are. Now, but the reason we sailed through that channel and playing a little aggressive here is we got a shot just able to lob over that island for the New Jersey there, and we get a beautiful Savo taking nearly half of his health. Um, now, that gentleman, I think, was in the stream, or I'm not sure, but he was put in a tough position. And there come those torpedoes. What did we talk about? A perfect little channel for that destroyer. I think it was a lightning on the enemy team here, so we know that a lightning is close, and as a result, we are going to turn hard in you know, trying to throw off his torpedo aim. As we mentioned, never sail in a straight line in a battleship, and there is that lightning. But because we are, again, getting greedy in this game, we decide to stop our turn and turn a little bit back out. I wanted all guns on target for this Graf Zeppelin. We get the front two turrets off and get trolled by RNG, but it doesn't matter. We pop the high caliber there, so 30% of the team's damage is owned by us as we uh, actually get lobbed, I think, by the Graf Zeppelin secondaries. 
not a great idea to, to meme build a carrier. So it can be fun in maybe about one out of every 400 games. But <laughs> here comes that Zeppelin, and we're just on the full offensive here. We do have that Kansas out to our flank, and if the Kansas, there you can see me. That's why I use overview camera. I'm looking at the Kansas. I'm looking to see if he was spotted. Now here we try and take the Torp on the belt while missing the Torp on the nose. If you did not know, torpedoes on the nose and stern are more likely to flood. They are less armored parts of the ship and battleships do have a little bit extra torpedo protection. Now, whether or not that is calculated in, in Wargaming's spaghetti code, who knows? Um, but that is just what I've been told by, you know, better players and, and the development staff and team. Now here, I have no idea how he didn't die. F two pens, five over pens, and a few hits there as more torpedoes come from, I think, uh, either the Lightning or another destroyer. But because we saw that first set, we go ahead and turn in here, and we actually get a beautiful dodge on that second set. And there's that Kansas that we talked about. Um, I kind of skipped over the point, but overview camera, that's the reason we use overview camera, right? To see what is around you. We knew that Kansas was out there, but because we have situational awareness, we, we took a peek at our overview camera. He wasn't spotted. He wasn't shooting. You know, we could deal with the threats in front of us. Now, if he was spotted and shooting, it's something we have to worry about. In that, you know, in that specific situation, it's probably better just to avoid the torpedoes and kill the carrier than it is to really worry about the Kansas. But I want to teach you guys these principles as they do, you know, like not every game is going to be like this. Uh, but we actually popped our AA in that in that short little cluster of time. We popped our a AA, defensive AA and got uh, a quick little 10 planes. So we had zero planes. We weren't really focused at all for a majority of the match. And then we ended up with 10 in a short amount of time. Now, we do know that fighters go down fairly, uh, you know, they do not have a lot of health, uh, but you can just see how strong the AA is on that ship. Now, this Kansas, I'm not sure what he was doing. This, you know, is a typical American battleship player with most of his health left at the end of a, a huge loss, um, And but uh, he's just out there kiting. And this is sort of the end of the game here, a, a nice little finishing. I think I get a Confederate medal here. Uh, we switch to the, the HE. We probably should have had the HE loaded. Uh, we probably should have never switched to the AP in that in that situation. But here comes the Lightning. And honestly, I think I, I, I wanted to take a Torp here just so I could farm a Dreadnought and a Confederate. But we take it on the belt there, and we actually do not get a Flood. So uh, if you are able to, try and put those torpedoes on the belt so that way you can avoid Floods. Um, but uh, I actually think we end up missing this torpedo here. <laughs> <laughs> where sometimes I want to take it. Uh, also, if you'll notice, uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of different things happened in that sequence. We popped our heel, and our heel got us tw almost 25% health back. Uh, so just a very good battleship, very versatile, um, which is kind of leading me to try, you know, new ships. The meta has certainly changed. I used to be one of those ignorant American Iowa players who sat in the back and thought every ship should, you know, sail broadside to me. Um, and the game just isn't like that anymore. There are carriers, there are different destroyers as we pop the Confederate medal and another heal there uh, to get back to nearly half health. So um, just a very versatile battleship. And like I said, it's, it's been, the, the change in the game has been leading me to play a little bit different, you know, style, multiple different ships. Now, certain ships are just bad. You know, I, I don't think the Vanguard is ever going to be good. Um, you know, same can be said for the Iwami. I don't think that ship is ever going to be labeled as good. Uh, but there are certain ships like the Lion, which I didn't really think was that great when I first got it, that are kind of, you know, finding their way into the meta. Um, and here's a nice almost 3,000 base XP, high caliber Confederate um, with a good team score, as you can see me flex once again there. Flex the tiny muscles there, and yes. Uh, I go over my build here, but that is the video, guys. Only three fires, uh, one or two citadels there. Uh, but just a good damage total, 185 is a lot, you know, that's an excellent total. I, I think I clickbait 200k too much where 185 doesn't mean that much to me, but uh, a, a great score nonetheless. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you guys think of the line down below. A run out. Peace.